Hey everyone, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate demo for the piece I call Foxface. So I've already done a draw this in your style in the past from Jordi Villaverde, and uh, I just think his style is super eye-catching and his colors are awesome and his use of pink is right up my alley since it's my favorite color. Um, and so when he did this one that you're seeing here uh, not that long ago, I just felt like I had to jump in. When I did the previous one, I tried to do it in my style, but keep a lot of the same elements that he did. And for this one, I thought it'd be fun to really truly mix it up. So we'll talk about that when we actually get into the drawing section. And mid painting, I decided to pivot and go for this more painterly kind of messy style. I thought it would be a fun spin, especially since Jordy's work is so clean and crisp. In order to understand some of the techniques I use to try and get this messy style, we need to do a little bit of a breakdown just on the idea of basically adding drop shadows to brush strokes. So let's uh, take a look at that. One of the main goals once I actually get into the painting part of this video is trying to make things look like natural medium. Uh, if It might not look exactly like na a natural medium, um, but it's trying to kind of evoke that, right? Trying to get the painterly thing and amp it up a little bit. Some of that's done by keeping it a little bit messy, but the other thing that I wanted to try and communicate here was the depth that heavy paints will actually get you in a piece. So what you're gonna see me attempt to do in this video, here, let's go ahead and do just some like, like a brush stroke right here. I'm using the regular turpentine brush that's in the painting section uh, because the one that I created, uh, if you've used it a bunch, you know, it's smoother. Uh, and it also has some color variation, which is uh, desirable, but uh, not necessarily what I want when I'm trying to make something look uh, even like kind of like messier and more natural. Uh, so we go back to the painting. Using the turpentine brush, it gets us a little bit more chaos. It gets us a little bit of blending. Like if I do this, I can I can start to kind of like blur it out a little bit and smudge it together and blend it. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to capture the idea of a brush stroke that's just laying down the paint really thickly. Now, if we were going to be painting this, and let's say we were going to be brushing, uh, doing some brushing, doing some painting, and then we come back to it later and we do more painting. So we get something like this, where technically there is a brush stroke, you can see right here on top of another of the same color. We want to try and create some separation there. So if we were to duplicate this, and then we were to take the bottom one, and just for the sake of making this really strong and clear, let's just make it black and then we turn on the one on top again. Already now we're getting a little bit of an outline, but this is super unnatural looking. So instead we want to try and shift it a little bit and then maybe lower that opacity on it like a ton so that we get something more like that. Where we're actually getting kind of like the depth of that paint stroke. Now, this is a simple way to do this in order to try and save some time and like make sure the efficiency is there. Uh, there are better ways to do this. There's also probably better brushes out there to do this. Uh, I don't know how good a brush in Procreate would be to do exactly what I'm trying to get here. There's probably some techniques that I could learn in order to amp that up even further. But for the sake of this piece, this is the way that I go to try and bring some of that depth in. You could do this in other ways too, by the way, you could keep the opacity at like 100% and try to go for like an overlay or something to try and get some of that depth there. The only reason why I think that going for black and reducing the opacity is a little bit better than going for this uh, more colored shadow is that what we're kind of trying to replicate when we go with this is actually gallery lighting to some degree. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it's so specific that it's like this is an exact way that a gallery would light it, but what we're looking for is the way we get some of that depth in a painting is because a painting might be lit in a certain way and it's creating these drop shadows. And when we're going with a more white light and a more black shadow, it's actually a little bit more realistic looking than if we were going with something that was a little bit more stylized. So, that's how we try to get the depth in this painting, and I'll try to highlight that uh, when we get there. But this is one of the techniques in which we're trying to make sure that that happens. I could go really far if I wanted to, and I could actually paint dimension uh, into this. So like for instance, let's go with 
a simple version here. Just create like white. Let's just do some white. Let's fill it in. Fill. Let's select the paint and clear it. And then remove this layer a little bit down because that's theoretically, so you can see here, it's got the outline of it. We move it a little bit down and then we reselect that paint and then select the inverse of it and clear it. And now we've got this white that's highlighting it. Here we could lower the opacity on that or we could set that to like an overlay or something like that. In fact, overlay probably works for something like this. And now we're adding even more dimensionality to that brush stroke. Now, the only problem with this technique or, or the main problem with this technique, I guess you could say, is that the interior details that a brush might bring to a stroke uh, is not there. You would have to basically manually add that in. So like if I went down here to like this dry brush, since it's scratchier, and I kind of went like that, you know, we kind of, we can kind of get something like that in there. And in fact, if we then underneath that went in with black and tried to do something similar and then lower that opacity like a ton, this is really shitty to like, don't get me wrong, but like this is starting to show how we might be able to get something like that going in a painting where we're trying to make it look like it's got some of that interior texture as well. Now, again, there are brushes out there that already do some of these types of things, if you've got some suggestions, I'd love to see them. I'd love to try them out. That would be really fun. As you know, if you've followed this channel for a while, I'm usually a guy that doesn't delve into complex brushes that much. But I think that these techniques that we're looking at right here actually do pretty well for uh, communicating something that looks like a brush stroke with depth. And if you execute it well, uh, I think you can get a lot of play out of it. It's like kind of a quick way to get a little bit of texture. So now let's dive into the actual piece and we can talk about how it actually is applied here. Okay, so let's talk about the actual design stuff. Uh, you can see in the original image that Jordy did, which I'll throw here in the corner, you can see that I uh, instantly decide to elongate the character. Uh, when I was doing the original one, while I wouldn't say that I got the exact proportions that Jordy does, uh, I definitely tried to embrace the shorter proportions, the more squat proportions in the previous Draw This In Your Style that I did. Uh, for this, I thought that uh, even though I love that look, I feel like that there's something about that that's actually closer to my natural inclination. So I wanted to kind of push against that. So I wanted to go all the way over towards this really tall, almost uh, Jack Skellington, Skellington like uh, proportions. Uh, I just thought it would be a nice thing to mix it up and it would be something that would immediately take it away from what Jordy had done in his piece. Let's freeze on it for a second. So this is the rough sketch that I decide, okay, I like where this is going. All the proportions that you see here essentially hold for the remainder of the painting uh, and through the drawing process. Now, we're still kind of though, we're not in the phase yet where I decide to go for this really painterly look. So let's jump back into the drawing. You'll see as I start to do the lines here, uh, there's a pretty clear intention that I'm going to go for these like really, really clean lines and actually in some ways be similar to Jordy. Jordy goes for these really crisp, precise lines. That wasn't exactly what I was going for, but you can see that these are all like kind of single stroke. They're just big and bold and they're really clean, but using a pencil instead of using like a digital pen or something like that. Um, and what I was thinking about doing at this stage was actually embracing the base drawing that I had done, but just then go with clean lines and potentially even only doing the colors that you see here, only doing the mask colors and then leaving everything else black and white. The reason I wanted to do that was because I knew at least at this stage that I wanted to do something fresh with the colors that Jordy used. Like I said, Jordy uses really bright colors that I absolutely love, but I feel like they, they already synergize with my style too much and I want to be away from that. I want to, when I'm, I've, I've talked about this in all the other Draw This In Your Styles, I'm always looking for something that I can do that's going to be really interesting for me. Is it going to be either kind of like right in my pocket, but I'm going to interpret it in my style and it's gonna be kind of like what people think is like a quintessential uh, Mike Henry painting? Or am I going to try and do something fresh with it? And so with this, I wanted to go like the most fresh. I wanted to try and do like as many new things as possible. Uh, so we were starting with baby steps. We did 
totally different proportions. Uh, but now you can see we're still doing like a clean line drawing, but then it's like, okay, well, instead of the pink and all the, the bright ass colors, let's go with something where it's actually just kind of like black and white. Maybe I would do the rest of her in gray tone or something like that. But um, what I started to think to myself was if I do something like that, I'm actually not embracing why I like Jordy's design so much, which was like color. Uh, and so even though I ultimately don't end up doing the exact same colors that he does, uh, color was a big part of my decision making process. So you can see here, I'm almost done wrapping up the clean lines for this whole thing. Uh, and again, this is just kind of like a straight, I'm gonna bang out some lines for this. There actually wasn't a lot of thought or effort uh, put into this part of it um, because I was just kind of trying to get it done. And actually there was an aspect of it where I was like, okay, and then when I'm done drawing that, I'll do like another pass that's like a little bit nicer. Uh, but then I, at this point, decide, nope, you can see right here, I'm messing around already with a painterly thing, and I'm just drawing a straight line with that turpentine brush, the original turpentine brush, not the one that I created. And you can see how, like, kind of messy it is, right? And how, like, jagged it is. And this is the point where I start thinking to myself, okay, I've got something really cool here. I'm gonna go as minimal as possible but still keep things painted and make it look like it's like finished, quote unquote. You don't want to make it look like it's too unfinished, like you actually screwed up. But I need to start thinking to myself, how am I going to shade this? Uh, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to try and bring depth to this entire thing, how am I going to bring, bring depth? if I'm trying to keep things so minimal. And it's funny, I don't know how clear it is, but all of the pieces that I do for A Village Corrupted and all of the Christmas ones that I do are actually done with extremely minimal shading. So the experience with something like those pieces actually carries over into this because I'm trying to keep it minimal, establish depth and hierarchy and all of that kind of stuff without making it like this rendered super uh, shadowy thing. Uh, one thing I wanna call out, it's about to happen. It's gonna go by real fast. You're gonna see these white brush strokes jump across the hand and that is the hand and arm. And that is me actually already starting to say, okay, I'm really liking how messy this is and how painterly this looks, but can we get more of that? Uh, right here, you can see that. I slowed it down as much as possible. Uh, that's me trying to say, I feel like I need to get some texture within these strokes. How am I going to be able to do that reliably without this being something that I am agonizing over trying to get? Now I'm gonna stop doing some zoom ins for a bit. We're gonna just kind of fly through the rest of this flatting process. Uh, it's flats, but it's kind of a weird thing in this case because it's not that classic sense of flats where these, there are these really clean shapes that they're using for selections and then you're rendering over on top of it or shadowing or doing whatever you wanna do on top of it. Um, they are essentially the same thing here, but they're so messy and we end up treating them so uniquely. We, we try to go in and actually apply shadow in only very controlled areas. So it's, it's a little bit of a different beat here but I'm gonna stay zoomed out because you've already seen the texture of them you've already seen that and we can just kind of let this fly through I'm also gonna leave Jordy's uh, piece up here in the corner because I think that it's going to be important as we go on to see how the color changes the color choices are different uh, than what Jordy went with some of the elements, this is a good time for me to talk about the elements of Jordy's design. Uh, Jordy's design is super fun, right? There's this sort of like um, elaborate ornamentation thing that he does where he's got all these like, these like stickers or buttons on the gun. He's got these buttons on the fanny pack. He's got the fanny pack. He's got the mask. He's got the wrappings. One sock is higher than the other. There's a lot of self customization that his characters have that I think is just really charming and has this really cool vibe to it. And then on top of that, he throws things in like the kanji and the katakana and the heart bubble coming out of the mouth and the big like burst in the background even the, the little bits of hair kind of flying off are really kind of cool right and it's all these additional touches not to mention the fact that he's got these clean colors and clean lines but then he brings in texture to give them some extra flavor and i like all of that stuff so while i was in here and when i did the original the other draw this in your style which by the way that's on the channel i'll link it below just in case you're curious it's called choni Athul, but i'll just link it so you can find it um but the when I did that one, I was trying to make sure that I nailed everything. I had the spark in the background, I had the katakana and the kanji, I had like all of this kind of stuff like in there. Um, but for this one, I wanted to see if there were unique ways that I could interpret all of these things. Uh, so you'll notice that I try to touch on everything, however I leave out something that I chalk up to being texture. So like the texture in the smoke, the texture in the burst in the background, 
noise that's in some of the flats and shadows. I decided to leave all of that out and instead say, okay, pretend I'm doing this in a completely different medium and I don't have access to some of those things. Uh, so let's just ignore them. And instead let's go for the impression of some of these things. Uh, one of the big things that I changed, uh, which somebody even like gave me shit for, which I thought was hilarious on, I think Instagram. Um, I decide to not do the burst as a big block of color. I decided to do it just as line because I thought that that would actually be really over powering in an already kind of chaotic uh, treatment of this piece. Um, so I wanted to go with this more minimal kind of like scratched in uh, thing for that burst in the background. I just do a, a yellow line. Um, so there were a lot of deliberate choices that were made here to say, actually, I'm going to reference the heart. The heart in the bubble is just going to be hearts floating around her head. I'm going to reference the burst, but I'm not going to do a big solid blocked burst. I'm going to do a line. Um, I end up leaving out the kanji and katakana this time just because I, I just wanted to. Um, and I also don't have the kanji that's on her head. Um, I leave that out as well. Just some choices that I felt like were adding some some more noise, again, to something that was more chaotic than his original, so I wanted to kind of reduce that just a little bit. Um, the color choices that I go with are slightly different than his. Uh, you can still tell that she's got blue skin, you can still tell that she has a white mask, um, but we are making a few interesting choices here. Like, I believe that the value of all my whites is lower than his whites. Um, some of the blue, actually my blue I think is a little bit brighter, at least in as, as an overall color. I think he's got a couple spots that get a little brighter. Um, but this is, the stage that we're at right now where we're still doing the flatting isn't necessarily the final color of any of these elements. Some of them will get tweaked a little bit as time goes on, uh, but I am making also some choices where I'm trying to get within the ballpark for some of his colors, but I'm also trying to pull back on others. Uh, with the previous piece that I had done, I again tried to hit all the colors and tried to make sure that even though I was doing a different style of rendering and everything, it felt perfectly on point. Um, this I was kind of going for something that was more like you would almost like find a canvas of this in like an alley somewhere uh, that somebody had painted just trying to replicate the other thing and then you know it's it's kind of this like messy street thing um, like street art on a canvas kind of thing that's the vibe I was going for and it's funny because I like sh I like feet shapes that are much closer to the feet shape that uh, Jordy did but since I wanted to again be really different I went with these more like clown feet shaped things which is really outside of what I usually do let's say um but then i just recently did that grinch piece where i kind of almost brought back the a very similar vibe so maybe maybe i'm going towards longer feet now i don't know so in a second here, we're going to get to kind of like the next freeze point, which is going to be when the, the general flats are done uh, right here. So this is the point now where I get to kind of make some initial calls on where is this whole thing going to go now? Are we going to incorporate some lines? Are we going to... Uh, how are we going to are we going to render it a little bit more or are we going to leave things kind of flat um, so this was actually like a really big decision point now I wouldn't say that it was a decision point in the sense that I got here and then I was like okay now time to decide but it was more like this is where the effort was going to start towards the the final look of the piece so as we exit this uh, still frame here we're going to start getting into uh, where that technique that I demoed earlier is going to become a part of it as well as a couple of other things with me like duplicating layers and creating some uh, some sense of line work so here's where I decide hey what if I just did lines for that spark in the background you can see I started with a uh, bigger brush and then went to something that was a little bit more small. Here's where I'm trying to work out what do I actually want that shape to be. I will be admit that I didn't have a lot of clarity around exactly how that could look, um, so I just decided to like play with it a bunch until I had something that, that I liked. Something I also like is the look of having like the paint separating or the paint not being completely painted in and there being something underneath. So one of the ways that I wanted to start trying to capture that was with this black that you're starting to see um, kind of in the, it's, it's kind of like an outline, but it also kind of looks like it's a gap at the same time, almost like the canvas was black and then some of this got painted in. Um, and then there, it's not all like perfectly lined up. Uh, and that was actually just done by duplicating all of the layers of the character underneath and making them black and then shifting around and erasing in some spots and just kind of getting it where I wanted it to be. Uh, there will be some areas where I'll hand paint in some extra stuff here or there, um, but that's kind of the gist of it. 
Now for the hair, uh, we're not going for a shadow, which by the way, you can see I just recolored it. We're not going for like a really rendered shadow, but we still want that to have depth. We want it to be like a nice big shape, but we also want it then its interior details to communicate some depth to it. And this is where we're starting to put in a couple of shadows in places to really drive home some of the forms. If we didn't put that shadow underneath her jawline, then her head would feel less round. It would feel kind of like it just kind of into that neck. And uh, we wanted it to have a little bit more uh, of a demarcation there. Um, adding also a little bit of extra depth to the gun just by throwing some black on it and lowering its opacity. Uh, we also made her back leg just all dark. Instead of putting a cast shadow there, we were just pushing it into the background a bit. Coming up, you're gonna see a lot of paint experimentation. This is something that I always encourage the viewers of this channel to do themselves as well, is experiment. Uh, take a pause for a minute. Don't think about the end goal of the piece in terms of I need to get to the end goal, but instead think about what you want that end goal to be and just kind of stop and do some experimentation. You can see here I'm messing around with a bunch of brush stuff. I'm then duplicating it or darkening it or setting it to overlay or then trying to make a drop shadow off of the overlay and like all these types of things. Things, this is me just kind of really messing around and saying I know kind of where I need this to go but I also need an efficient way to get there instead of over noodling this thing um, now in the background I'm actually doing some techniques that I did on the other draw this in your style I uh, did not that long ago called what's he up to it was based on a Patrick Belanovsky uh, piece um, where I'm basically painting on a new layer on the background and then I'm using that under painting to establish some like textures and some depth and then we're using that pink that's painted on top as like that is our background pink quote unquote but then we've got these other colors underneath uh, and other textures underneath that are kind of seeping through. Uh, the idea here is to really just try to communicate the idea that there is layers to this. We're trying to get back to that original demo where I was talking about the the light how the light in your actual environment how that impacts the way the paint looks on a canvas and we're trying to make sure that we're at the very least like referencing that even if we're not pulling it off like perfectly we want it to have a little bit of that vibe going on now i can't explain every flash of light and every sort of like change that you're seeing here uh, some of that is going to be me searching for drop shadows some of that is going to be me searching for highlights creating like edging on the um, paint so that it looks like light is hitting it. Um, but there's a lot of experimentation happening here. And unless I was doing this in real time in front of you, uh, you wouldn't be able to catch all of it because some of it is like, what about this? No, fuck that. What about this? Okay, that's cool. And just like moving on through it. Uh, I also went through and added some additional paint daubs. Uh, like you can see her elbow got like an actual uh, extra bit of detail there and you can see there on the mask was brought in and other areas some more paint strokes that we then added more drop shadows to. Uh, here I'm just fixing some of that shape with her skirt I didn't really like it so this is just getting thrown on on top we're just you know uh, it's like a patch we're just patching it in. You can see a bunch of little tweaks. And then this is where I didn't really know what to do with the smoke. So I started experimenting with some really graphic versions of it. Um, I thought like, oh, well, what if it's kind of like this almost like pencil drawn on top or something? I was just trying to go for something that looked a little natural medium and like it was uh, just thrown on. Almost like the artist had forgotten about the smoke until the very end, wink, wink. Um, and then I thought, actually, what if I just embrace the fact that I've been using this turpentine brush and I just kind of like stroke it through and like drag all of that paint with it. Uh, the problem is, is that it won't drag the paint with it unless you have your layers kind of merged together. So what I had to do in order to really get that look was I had to take all the background layers, which things are gonna start flipping on and off and you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. All those background layers had to be brought together and then I had to just paint that smoke into that background layer in order to get that smearing effect happening. And then I had to do the same thing with everything else actually. So what you're gonna see right here, so that's me, that's me experimenting with it. And then I decided to just take the turpentine brush and go through it. And that's what you see right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing, uh, but this time we're gonna do it on top of everything else. And you get that smear right there. And that's literally me just taking gray and painting it with the turpentine brush and dragging all of that paint with it in one big stroke. We're almost at the very end here. You're seeing a bunch of little extra drop shadows getting added, some additional little paint things for detail. Um, and that's kind of what gets thrown in there at the end. 
There's also a little bit of a color correction thrown over the entire thing to kind of like mute it and bring everything like a little pink. Um, it's really, really subtle, but it does bring the image into a completely different flavor ultimately than the original that I was basing all of this off of, uh, Jordy's piece. If you'll indulge me for just a second, I'm going to put some zooms here so that you can see uh, what the effect ultimately gives you. Now, I think that when you see this on Instagram or you see this, uh, maybe when you're seeing it at 1080p on a screen, it'll be really clear. I don't see it that way while I'm recording, but I just kind of wanted to provide a few zoom ins here so that you can see when it's actually viewed largely uh, the benefits that you get and the texture that ends up coming out of this. To wrap this up let's go through the major stages while the major stages are, are playing in the background i just want to say uh thanks to jordy for such an awesome uh piece to kind of base all of this off of uh please go check him out i'll link him down below his instagram and his art station uh i again i've said this before but i highly encourage doing these types of challenges because you end up it's, it's just a fun exercise and you can see how other people think and you can also think about the way you think and interpret things. Uh, it's similarly to how I always encourage people to also do what I'm doing here on this channel. Talk about your process because it'll end up teaching you a lot. So I think that working with other people's art and talking about your process together can actually level you up pretty dramatically. So um, this is the last kind of like pass through and then we'll do the thank you screen pass through. Um, but I just want to thank Jordy for such an inspirational initial piece. And now, I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, 2020 has been a crazy year. This is the last video of the year. I hope you dug it. If you did, please consider throwing me a like and a subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me anywhere else on the internet, these icons below will show you where I am.